my name is Jonathan Paul Jackson. I'm here at Montrose Gallery, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my work uh, that I have up right now. Um, a lot of the work that I have in this show is my botanical based work. Um, a lot of the work is referencing nature and the environment. The work currently that's in front of us. Uh, is made from repurposed material. It's an old kitchen, or it's an old dining room table that I just framed out um, and then pasted some paper onto it and then drew on top of it, um, poured polyacrylic onto it, wait for it to dry, drew on top of the polyacrylic, and then repeated that process probably seven times. Um, yeah, and then go for like, a lot of my work is mixed medium uh, just to create uh, a different expression for each person whenever they see it. I think whenever you use different materials, you can get different uh, emotions from people. And that's kind of like what I'm definitely going for. The more people can like sit with the piece uh, and meditate on it and try to figure out either what I've done or what's going on, it's like, it's, it's important for me as an artist. So I try to add as much material and still keep it cohesive. Uh, as much as possible. Tell me a little bit about um, the relationship between your art and nature. Um, yeah, so the work, a lot of my work is like strictly about nature. Um, I kind of like took out the human figure to like replace it more with nature, mainly so to put more emphasis on the importance of the environment and nature itself. Uh, just because like the earth is on fire and I think we can pay, we pay more attention to it, we take more responsibility for like, for our actions in a way. Um, so if, I, if me as an artist can continuously make work about nature, put it in front of your face and make you think about nature constantly rather than uh, putting a human figure in front of you and then you just think about a human figure. So that's what I like to do, that's what I like to put paint, paint mostly paintings of nature and, and, and uh, flowers and animals. Tell me a little bit about this one. This one. Yeah, so this is a diptych I made and it's kind of like a push and pull. Um, it is, it's a printout that I made uh, during the pandemic whenever we were stuck in our homes, I had a, I have a garden, and so I was taking uh, pictures of my garden and then printing them out. Um, and then I did like a, I created this technique where you like do a double print, so you can like print over the print. Um, so I printed over a print of some flowers that I have in my backyard and then started painting over them. And then I did, wanted to do like the contrast of like, how I see nature in my my imagination versus like real life, I guess you could say, are close to real life. What about these uh, color meditations? Yeah, so the color meditations are something that I've been doing for the past, man, I guess like five years now. But they were at first an experiment into color theory, um, just because I was like interested to see how colors would play with each other. Uh, and the only way I could really learn how to do that was if I just started like adding colors to paper and then doing brush strokes over them to see how they would manipulate with each other and work with each other, work against each other, how colors would create like whatever, you can do like three swipes and make a, dip, you know, a different shade of a different color. Um, and so without those experimentations, I wouldn't have these. And so um, I became more like, uh, more aware of what I was doing whenever I was experimenting. So like, I knew what blue and red would do whenever you mix them together or whenever you put them together. So the idea was like, I would be more aware of like the colors that I would mix. Um, and then I started mixing like different brands of paint. So the different brands of paint would have different chemicals because different paint companies like to make their paints differently. And so they, so the chemicals that would be in paint A would react to different chemicals and paint B, and so you get this push and pull, and almost like um, psychedelic, like, uh, happening with the colors, which I just found really fascinating. And what is your favorite medium? Uh, 
I see you have? I don't know. That's so hard. That's a hard question to answer. I like I like all of them so much. They're I, I think I guess painting because I know so much about painting. Like in that sense, like I I know so much about it that I can express myself in a lot of ways with it. So that's why I guess that's why I enjoy painting. And even on the like the, here you have a this is like a hanging sculpture or yeah. how would you call it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, it has painting too. Yeah, it's like a painting on sculpture, but it's more sculpture based, I guess you could say. Um, how do you do this? Yeah, it's so these are old warped two by fours that I cut down the middle. And I cut down those long blocks into smaller blocks, and then um, and then me and my assistant try to put them together as flat as possible. But as they dry, they like start to bend even more, which is really interesting. So you just kind of have to like kind of let it do its thing and dry for like a couple of days, and add more blocks, wait for it to dry for a couple of days. They take like two. The surface takes like two months to make. And it takes me like an hour to make the painting. I'm gonna try to slow down on making the painting, enjoy okay, it. Uh -huh. But I have like the like I see as a because I'm working on the surface for so long, I'm able to see like what I want to paint on me for like two months. So it's like it just comes out immediately. And uh, you told me that this shape that you do that is kind of repeated in all in most of your paintings. It's a leaf. Yeah, it's a leaf. Um, I started doing it when I was like 21, and I've been doing it for so long. And it started just, I didn't know what I was doing, but it was the first time I had, like, I'm a self-taught artist, so it was like the first time, I guess, like, I hit a breakthrough with my work, where you, like, as an artist, like, you, like, make some work and you get that tingling sensation, and it's just like, oh, man, like, you see it in your imagination, and it's exactly what you see in front of you. And it's, like, this great feeling. Um, so I, like, chased that feeling, like, I like, wanted to make, you know, so I just kept doing it in different ways and different facets. And then, like, a couple years after I started doing it, I started adding, like, color to it, which just, like, blew my mind even more. Um, but, yeah, and so it's just kind of, like, being an abstract expressionist, it's important for me to take you, like, halfway there, right? Like, I don't want to give you, like, the full leaf. I just want you to, like, realize it's a leaf, and then in your memories, and in your brain, you go through like this Rolodex of all these photos of leaves you have. You're like, oh, and then you hit like the leaf, and it's like, okay, now that looks like the leaf I, you know, the, that's a leaf I know. And so you like, again, you spend more time with the work because you're trying to figure out, is that a leaf? And then once you do figure out it's a leaf, you're like, your brain is trying to figure, like, trying to go to all the photos and memories of leaves you have to like relate to it because that's what our brains do. Yeah. And how much uh, do you plan your, your work? Do you plan ahead? Is it more no, spontaneous? It's really, spon it's all spontaneous. It's hard for me to like, I don't sketch anything out. I haven't sketched anything out in like 10 years. Um, what other hobbies you have? I mean, I know painting is not a hobby, but you know, I see that you like to garden. I love to garden, yeah. It's is like that kind of your hobby? Yeah, it's definitely like a release from painting because I paint so much, or I make so much art, you know, I'm always trying to work. And so um, it's a good way for me to like get out of the studio and like kind of reset, you know, and like not like I'm working with something that I love, which is nature, and then getting to like have tomatoes and cantaloupes and stuff like that in the garden is like really nice. So it's like super rewarding. And then I get to like go back into the studio and it's like, and then the paintings like, that I finish the paintings a lot faster because sometimes like I'll get frustrated and go work in the garden to like not kind of like because you can overwork a painting or you can make a wrong move or whatever you know and so in order for myself to like stop myself from overworking a painting like I usually go to the garden to like just what other hobbies do you have that inspire your work or other activities in your life uh, I guess it's it's crazy to say like so I guess whenever I'm out painting, and before the pandemic, like, uh, I do music festival organizations, like, our organization, and so, like, uh, I do, like, coordination and um, site operations, and so 
that's like something else that has like helped me become a good artist because it's helped me like schedule out myself like with what I do with 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 music festivals it has to be so scheduled out you know like this day is this day we're getting this stage the next day we're getting the second stage and so on and so forth and so like whenever I make work or whenever I'm like trying to apply to a gallery or a residency like I'm it's easier for me to like articulate like what I need to do to get to the end goal. Yeah. Also, hey. I love to cook. I'm sorry? I love to cook. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that too in your posts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cooking is awesome. And uh, what are your favorite ar uh, artists? Mm, Egon Shiwi, of course. Uh, Dali is great. Um, Basquiat. That's like, I, don't, I guess I don't have to say that one. Um, do you um, paint any art? Do you have any figurative art? Or figure art? Yeah, I do. Um, there's a series that I work on where I print out enlarged photos of African sculptures, um, and then I make like I make like huge. They won't, I want them to like be like scrolls, um, so I like make like nine foot, seven foot by nine foot paintings with those. Yeah. That's like probably as close to figurative, I guess you could say. Oh, and let's talk about this one that you have here. Uh, let's not forget. But you have a whole series with this. Yeah. Tell us about this one. Yeah, so uh, this work is, it's again, again, it's like uh, my way of trying to get people more interested in the environment and like nature and so on. And so the idea was like, I wanted to take photos, I went to the zoo and took photos of this baboon and other animals. But I took photos of this baboon in particular, and it like looked right at me whenever I took the photos, so it was like kind of interesting. But the idea is like I wanted to like have him have a friend in the background, which was like my own hand gestures. Um, yeah, so again, it's like the idea is like if I can create awareness to people by like creating these like very lar like large paintings of the environment, then I hope I can like make people like second guess like what we're doing to the environment. What are you working right now in? What are you? Uh, right now, I'm working on a show for the Dottery Art Center in Austin, Texas. And it's my, um, it's my West Texas landscape paintings. So I went out to West Texas for about two weeks and shot over like a thousand photos. And so I print out these photos, I enlarge them, and I paint over them. So the idea would be, I, uh, the, the idea was that I would go out there, paint over them, and like have dirt and like my sweat and the heat, like whenever I was creating these paintings to have like the expressions of what the desert is. And so um, I really enjoyed making the series, so I continued to make the series. Um, yeah. So you, there was a little planning there. Yeah, going like, there and right. Well, uh, it was an adventure. That was like that was actually I actually got an art residency out out in West Texas, ah, okay. and so I didn't know I was getting it until like August or something. But yeah, but definitely was planning. I planned and I got a car before I went out there. And so yeah. Uh, what can you tell other artists about art residencies or how to apply for, um, you know, to submit work and all of that? Yeah, um, where to start? Yeah, like, I guess the idea would be to get a CV and bio together um, and make sure it's cohesive. If you have a friend that's like an English slash lit major, they, I'm sure they would love to edit it for you. Um, get a whole bunch of eyes on it. Like, after you read it, have like six other people read it and, and like see what it, what it sounds like to them. Um, as far as applying for our residencies, um, just make sure that whenever you're sending photos, make sure it's, it's an eclectic group of work if you're able to. Sometimes they ask for specific stuff, but if they, if they just want to see a body of work, just make sure it's like eclectic as possible. If you paint and do other types of paintings, then like send like huge, like send, if you do 10 different type of paintings, send a photo of each different type of painting. So that way they get to see like, where you're at, because they might, they might be able to see something that you don't see, and so they're like, oh, like, if you work on a painting like that, like, you should kind of blah, blah, blah. So, it's just, that's important. Yeah, so they can guide you mm -hmm. where, where to go. 
Uh, is there anything you would like to add? No, that's it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Yola.